The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Good morning. Happy Thursday, July 20th. It's 5.31 right now. And I saw something spectacular this morning, Steph. Spectacular. It's only 5.31 and you've had time to see something spectacular. Spectacular. Ooh wee! <laughs> uh, yeah, at uh, at three thirty when I w- w- went outside, looked up at the sky. First of all, I saw a star, and I wow. haven't seen a star in a long time. That is quite a spectacle, <laughs> a stellar event. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too good. Uh, yeah, so that fascinated me. And then as I like panned over to my left, I just saw this open sky, no clouds. Well, maybe there were clouds. Uh, no smoke, <laughs> but the sky looked like the ocean. Really? It just ripples. It was like, it was kind of bluish with ripples all throughout it, like they were waves or something. I posted a picture over on our Facebook that you can go check out. And then way off in the distance, it was this like orange little like beginning of of a potential sunrise. Wow, really yeah. cool. Yeah, and wasn't taking any extra things to assist my vision. I swear it happened. I swear the picture looks real. Oh. I know like, it, sounds, it sounds beyond what you can imagine, but <laughs> I posted the picture so you can check it out as well. It was really cool. Thank you for sharing your spectacular event. <laughs> There's a Donaire mascot story that is just expanding beyond belief in Alberta. And we were chatting about it yesterday because it is on the Alberta government auction website and they have extended the auction for like 25 extra yeah. days this time because it's such a rare and unique item. And it is. It truly is rare and unique. <laughs> it's a surplus website where they just get rid of stuff that they don't need anymore. And so a lot of great journalism has been going on up and down the province, not only in Alberta, but now over on the East Coast in the likes of like Nova Scotia. So there's this mascot looking Donaire costume available for an auction. Even has tin foil arms and tin foil <laughs> legs. Yeah. It has the you know those bodysuits, those green man bodysuits, blue man bodysuits. Oh yeah, morph yeah. suit. Yeah, morph suit. It has a silver one of those to match the tin foil <laughs> with your arms and legs everywhere. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it looks like it's seven feet tall, seven foot tall donair. And so yesterday we were talking about it. The bid was around I wanna say thousand dollars. Yeah, it was sitting right at a thousand. Mm-hmm. And then it the the East Coast got a hold of it. It started going viral and Halifax noticed First of all, that there's lettuce in the donair, and that's a huge no-no. Okay. You do not put lettuce in your donair. I like lettuce in my donair. It gives wow. it a nice crunch. Don't say that out loud. Pardon me. A lot of people I'll are listening back. right now. Pull these words back. <laughs> <laughs> I hate lettuce in my donair. Why would they do that? And then so the people who allegedly brought donairs to Canada, I want to say over in Halifax called King of Donair, they were on Twitter and they asked their followers, they're like, a, do we buy this thing over in Alberta? And B, do we remove the lettuce when we buy it? And everyone just bought on board with that. And so they started bidding on it in Halifax, King of wow. Donaire. Wow, okay. Blowers of Grafton in a Halifax-based restaurant that's now in Alberta, down in Edmonton, are also bidding on this. Uh-oh. So now we have Donaire shops going back and forth, driving up the price. We are now at over $6,000 no. for this Donaire mascot. Can somebody contact the person who made this and ask them how much it would cost for them to make a second one? Like right? $6,000 sounds like quite a bit for a Donaire costume. Yes, it is <laughs> hilarious. And it's going on for 25 more days. Yeah, they're going to have to wait. I wonder if it's going to cool and they're going to be like, oh, shoot, I hope they bid one more time so I don't have to spend $6,000 on a Donair costume. Yeah. What am I going to do with that? I do want to see. I I would go to a festival or a food truck that had a dancing Donair, though. You would be like that Donair place must be delicious because they paid money for a dancing Donair. Yeah, if I was totally blind to the situation <laughs> and there was a whole bunch of food trucks and there was a dancing Donair outside of one, I'm like, I'm going to go buy something from there. Okay, but you're a line hater. If everybody thought that and there was a big line but still a dancing Donair, are you going to that Donair truck still? No, I'm not. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. thought so. Shortly lived. Sean, I got another new term for you. Yeah, level up my lexicon, baby. <laughs> Sun pennies. Sun pennies? Yeah. Sun pennies. Yeah. One word or two? I guess it's two words. Okay. I'm not going to use it in a sentence for you. Sun uh, pennies. Can you tell me what sun we're talking about? If you must know, it's S-U-N. Ooh, okay. Sun in the sky. Yeah. Are these like the leftover 
pennies in like wells and fountains. Oh. Sun pennies. Sun pennies. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know what the sun has to do with those pennies. Mm, sun pennies. Sun pennies are the leftover pennies. That's just what the we call them. The leftover ones. Yeah, that's just, just like in pockets and cars they, oh. and everywhere. Those are the sun pennies. Those are forgotten pennies, yeah. but okay. Level up your lexicon. <laughs> Sean, you're failing over there. I know. Sun pennies Uh, is when you look out at a body of water, say a lake, mm. and the water is rippling and the sun is shining down on it. So it looks like little coins across the lake. Oh, okay. picture that? Yeah, I picture it. I got it. Yeah. So you might look out at the lake and say, oh, there's sun pennies all out in the lake. What a sun penny that is. That's so beautiful, don't you think? Yeah. I'll pass that along to my parents. They probably see that all the time in retirement. They probably do. Guess where I learned it in? Ontario. Cottage Life magazine. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> of course. I surprised myself with a leftover creation the other night, Steph. Was it so good that we all need to put this in our repertoire? Potentially, yeah. So uh, it, I'm a bachelor. I just cook for myself. And I had a lot of one-off ingredients in my fridge or freezer that didn't go together. So I would call those leftovers. Yeah. Not all of them are made. Some of them are made, whatever. Okay. And Just random stuff. Right. Because when you go grocery shopping, you have that fun app that like you buy certain ingredients for certain meals, right? Yes, I do. It's called Meal Lime, and it actually will create you a meal plan that uses your leftovers together with other meals yeah. so that you don't waste any food. Yeah, exactly. So so I had uh, a frozen garlic bread. I had a uh, dollar forty nine bacon from Save On dollar forty nine days, nice. and then I had an avocado that was going bad very quickly and I had uh, a half cut cucumber that was also in a plastic bag going bad type <laughs> He was of half thing. cut that cucumber <laughs> yeah. yeah and then so in my head I was like well I always love just putting things on bread so let's get that garlic toast going yeah, and then I was like sandwich man. let's mash that avocado on the garlic bread let's cook Aussie. the bacon ooh elevated Aussie and <laughs> <laughs> and then let's just chop up the rest of the cucumber and add it all together. That's like sounds delicious. That sounds like a twelve dollar sandwich somewhere. And and then I cut the garlic bread into like five different portions of it. And then so I had ten pieces of garlic bread. And so I went garlic bread, avocado, cucumber with the bacon on top. Uh pleasantly surprised how good it tasted. Did you just say you had ten pieces of garlic bread? Yeah, I ate it all. <laughs> I was like, did you have leftovers to your leftover meal? I surprisingly <laughs> ate it all. It was that good. It you was found pretty all fa- the room. A little, the bacon was a little salty. Maybe it had to do with the garlic bread as well. I don't know. Perhaps, yeah. More more cucumber next time. Balance out the salt, maybe? Yes. Great idea. That's what I was thinking. The, <laughs> the freshness in the watery cucumber, I could use a little more of that for my next time. Okay, but it could be on a restaurant. Like It, it really does sound like quite an elevated gourmet <laughs> meal over there. Do you have a name for your leftover dish when you just throw some things together from your fridge or freezer and then throw it out? I think sometimes you call it like a hodgepodge dinner. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of like, oh, whatever's happening. My parents always said it's a fend for yourself night, as in there's so many leftovers in the fridge. You just make yourself a plate and call it a day. That's right. Yeah, because I've always run into different people who call it different things. For instance, Paul over on our text line, 780-791-1037. You can text or call. Paul said in in their family when they're discussing dinner, they call it couldn'ts. What you couldn't eat yesterday, you eat today. Couldn't. We're having couldn'ts tonight. (laughs) I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Denise says she calls it, and we're having mishmash for supper. Uh, Just whatever's kind of there, leftovers. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a certain name for it, but I need to come up with one. It seems like everyone just comes up with their own. Yeah, leftovers just sound so bland yeah. now that you could have yeah. uh, couldn't. I, I, I might adopt couldn'ts from Paul. And apparently, uh, Tracy, right underneath, texted in as well and said, uh, that's what we call it too. Newfie leftover, couldn'ts. I might have just adopted. Yeah, I mean, we live in uh, the capital city of Newfoundland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why not? We can we can take some words. There we go. I like couldn'ts. So I'm a little late to the party on Lost, the TV show. Mm. You watch that? I've seen bits and pieces, but never just like full seasons on seasons. Okay, well, I've been watching it for the last couple months, and I'm finally on to season six. And I know that there was like quite an uproar 10 years ago when it was finishing. People hated what they did with it. They were really mad. 
And I can see why. I vaguely remember people causing an uproar about the ending. Yeah, because apparently the ending got leaked. A hundred people saw it. Yep. And so they changed what they had planned all wow. along for these six seasons so that this leak wasn't out there in the world. And they're Interesting. like, you think we got leaked? Not you've got some we've got something better for you. Yeah. It was worse. Oh goodness. <laughs> and honestly, this whole six season could have been one episode. I have no idea what's happening. I am hate watching the last <laughs> season of this. It's so bad. And I've like said to my husband last night we were thinking about watching something different yeah. and I said, I'm so tired of watching Lost. I just don't want to and he's like, I just want to finish it. Please can we just figure out what happens at you, the end? You've put in all the work, like we need to see this through. Yeah, but I'm like, I don't think we're gonna know what happens at the end because this last season is jumping back to the nineteen seventies, to three <laughs> years in the future, to like it is yeah. all over the place. There's an alternate timeline in it as well, not just like, oh, we're jumping back to the past it's also yeah. we're jumping back to if the plane never crashed yeah. it's ridiculous john i guess I, you could say you're a little lost watching the show yeah and i am on episode 13 which means i've got 10 more to continue <laughs> on in my lost endeavor you can't say the show didn't live up to its name oh dear <laughs> We have to give a major shout out to two local businesses for just uplifting the local community, Steph. Tell me more, Sean. Mm -hmm. So, Fort McMurray Catholic School Division, they have a football program. They pull kids from across the entire city uh, called the Saints. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the field that they play and practice on was destroyed due to flooding. And they had a sea can down on the field full of equipment due to that flooding. And it just sitting there, it grew moldy and unusable. And that flooding on that field was huge. I mean, we were joking that there yeah. was a new swimming pool in town. Yeah. Kids were actually swimming in it. Ducks started to make it their home. Like, it was quite flooded for quite a while. Yeah, very unknowingly. Uh, just making some jokes about it. And this is what it turned into. So it's absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm, that, like, absolutely. Like they can't even use the field anymore to like you. It's just absolutely broken and done with. Uh, but then now they need new equipment and they're practicing on a different field, which they can deal with. But like the equipment that the $30,000 worth of wow. equipment just absolutely gone. So then Yeti Rough Rider Rentals and JNS Bridge Construction both came together just the other day. They're both donating equal amounts of $15,000 each, and they're helping out with the effort to replace the equipment. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So weren't they gonna start a fundraiser to try and raise this $30,000? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they do have that fundraiser going on. And because like where we, everyone knows we're isolated and we have to play sports teams outside of Fort McMurray. So. All the time, they're always traveling down to Edmonton, all the way down and around to Grand Prairie. And they have to raise money for that as well. So they do have a fundraiser going on just for general uh, travels as well. But they lost their equipment on top of all that fundraising. Wow. And so the plea went out over the course of the past week or so. And as Fort McMurray always does, and you know, they come together. Two local businesses. Say them again. Yeah. So we have, let me find them here on this page here, JNS Bridge Construction in Yeti Rough Rider Rentals. Round of applause. Thank you so much. What an amazing story. Yeah. It is Wednesday, which means it's SPCA Pet of the Weekday. We got Misty here with us and this cute little puppy. Yeah, big shout out to Pet Value downtown in Eagle Ridge for making it happen. Misty, you just had to bring a puppy today. I had to bring one of our many puppies, our sweet little Ginny, who is a two-month-old mixed breed is what we have her down, mixed of cuteness because she doesn't <laughs> even look real with those little folded ears. Um, definitely going to be probably a medium-sized dog, maybe between the small, like not super small, but like... You know, mm -hmm. smaller than standard at the shelter. <laughs> uh, she's so sweet and cuddly and just adventurous. Um, she's working on her her uh, puppy pad skills. She's acing that, as our uh, <laughs> admin ladies will say. 
Um, she, We're starting crate training, so what we do at the shelter is we start crate training them young. So when you take them home, they're used to their safe space. So if you're ever visiting and you see some of our puppies, because we have so many right now in the hallway getting crate trained, it's for the benefit yeah. of the adopter. Start them young and then they'll love it. You don't want to take them home and then be like, what is happening? Yeah. Uh, she is just... <laughs> she's still just growing into her own, just being a puppy <laughs> and just growing up, basically. So if you adopt the puppy, you basically get just to adapt how they grow up, essentially. Yeah. No. So if you're looking, we have many... We, we still have some of our talk show hosts up there. Uh, we just posted <laughs> two yesterday, uh, Atlas and Asteria. Uh, lots of cute little puppies, but of course, a lot of doggos too if you're not a puppy fan and you want to just skip right to the adult dog phase also have some of those (laughs) Mm -hmm. what else is going on at the spca right now so next friday is our uh second car wash barbecue nail trim fundraiser uh so the cool part about that is it's not just your standard like bucket of water and soap we're gonna have some fire trucks out so even if your little ones are just you don't want to get your car washed but your little ones like just love fire trucks like mine uh come on out and we have some incredible sun cares volunteers doing that <laughs> so that is all taking <laughs> see doesn't like the way the Ginny, wall looks Ginny is excited about it she's like get out there next Friday at Holy Trinity from 12 to 4. (laughs) I have brought a friend up here with the microphone. She doesn't want to talk now that she's here, but I'm in love. (laughs) Come and adopt Ginny and go say hi to the fire truck, Ben. (laughs) Thanks, Misty, for coming. (laughs) Happens every year. Tim Horton's camp day was yesterday. And they seem to elevate it every year. I remember going back and just like working within the radio so fun. You just get to like stand in the drive through, take people's orders, hand orders out and just have some fun with it. And every year like where can we take it next? Yeah, and I mean there was the window paintings kind of elevated mm. it, but then Holy it's just gotten bigger and bigger. Yesterday I was hanging out at Thickwood mm. and they were having a full on party out in their parking lot. I remember talking to you. I was in studio, you were giving me live updates all throughout the morning and Half the time, there'll be air horns going off or someone (laughs) playing a guitar. I'd be like, is that you or what's happening over there? Yeah. So Yuri was the team lead and she was rocking it. She had a karaoke machine there, (laughs) a full on stage set up. There was entertainment all day long. So if somebody wasn't singing karaoke, the guy with the guitar and the girl with the beautiful voice would go up there and sing. Um, There was like a duck pond for kids. There was face painting. And then on top of that, they had me hanging out there for a while. They had bylaw offices. officers there (laughs) but the bylaw officers were like hey your window's dirty let me clean that for a donation and they were even shining tires amazing yeah it's just the the way it evolves it's so fun gets the community together and just kind of raises money for a great cause we even had someone on our facebook say they've gone to camp day and like it's changed their lives yeah really really cool i mean i was always jealous of those commercials on summer camp (laughs) when they were like your coffee purchases send kids to camp i was like how do i get registered for that (laughs) camp it looks Amazing. So, so cool. Huge thank you to the community. That drive through line it never stopped the whole time I was there. And it was just really cool to see everyone coming out and supporting the mm-hmm. cause. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.